Hi, I'm Stephanie, together with Virtual Sheep Music, of course. Today, and with recent Christmas New Year shows hung up in the cupboard for another year, I'd like to reflect on music and its impact as regards dance and dance instruction. They are as disciplines inextricably bound, after all. Now, to set the scene, most of us, well, females at any rate, have at some point had dance lessons. In my day, and certainly in my experience, it erred on the classical arabesque demi-plie tradition where the aesthetic ideal, that of beauty and grace, was everything. Watch the turnout, point your toes, soften your arms, and other countless instructions would inspire me and my dance companions to try harder, all to the strains of the piano. Yes, in those days we had a live pianist, often admittedly a thumper, after years of service to the dance industry, yet good enough to get round tricky Tchaikovsky passages and the occasional list. Now, with only one instrument, you'd think it would have been a bit limiting, but thumping aside, I remember dancing to Italian tarantelles, American ragtimes, Verdi, and even Beethoven. My first experience with Beethoven's third piano concerto, the, the last movement, was doing a traditional uh, dance movement at the bar. So sure, without the technological support, there was no access to a diversity of instrumentation, you know, orchestral accompaniment as opposed to, for example, a pop song. And yet the music in those days always did seem varied. It also really helped at a practical level, having a live player who could stop and start up again at any point in the choreography. That is probably the main reason why a lot of dance companies still work with pianists. That and the fact that regardless of your personal instrumental preference, the piano with its sheer range of notes is still the nearest any one instrument comes to being an orchestra. Today's lessons, if the teaching at my daughter's dance school is anything to go by, is quite different. But then so is the technology. Pianists, for starters, seem to have been put aside for pen drives and portable speakers. Maybe this is as it should be. Technology is rendering obsolete a lot of our jobs in general. Uh, at a training conference I went to in Genoa a few months back, the journalist Sergio Bellucci warned that many of today's jobs won't actually exist in another five to ten years from now. Uh, by the way, has anyone noticed which governments from around the world are actually addressing this point? Okay, getting back to the piano though, um, nowadays you'll just line up choreography to track numbers, you know, the minutes and seconds, and yet how much more clinical is that when dancers would align themselves with the musician, and of course vice versa. Another thing to think about is that despite the choreography and musical notes never varying, aren't the artistic performances themselves supposed to be different every time they are realised? A musical recording eliminates this performance variant. You know, Cage's four minutes 33 seconds spectacularly demonstrates this point. Though whether this changes things might just be a moot point in any case. After all, the famous choreographer and dancer Béjart danced to completely pre-recorded music as early as 1957. Check out the link below. And he didn't seem particularly bothered. Leaving aside the above debate and going back to dance lessons, there is no denying that portable sheet music has changed things, both in terms of the teaching and in the realization of shows. But together with this has come a massive change in a consumer society, yes, uh, of technology, but also of musical consumption itself and the expectations of said consumers. Girls, who are, it is fair to say, the vast majority of dance students, come to lessons already MTV primed. They want a certain style and a certain dance step. Dance teachers, afraid of losing students, put aside musically contrasting works, and I'm not just talking Tchaikovsky here, huh? In the name of consumer, pressure, and the various musical worlds of dance are not then adequately explored. Indeed, the result is that a new breed of dance teachers emerge without a musical compass, and the process continues. I would argue that the narrowing down of musical expression in dance has already had a huge effect in the international dance world. I saw, for example, the dance company Momix a few years back 
spectacular dancing, but the music was embarrassingly two-dimensional, lacking in contrast and in interest, and in my opinion, letting down the choreograph choreography. It struck me that perhaps it was the dancers themselves that had chosen such an unexciting array of pieces and that perhaps they needed some professional musical advice from a qualified expert. And without meaning to be snobby here, I'm going to put an emphasis on the word qualified. I talked at some length with my daughter's principal teacher, who's an ex La Scala dancer, and she agreed with me at every point. She has personally made some headway in addressing this musical imbalance, but recognises the resistance by most students and indeed their parents. The bottom line is this, a reduction in musical language becomes a reduction in dance language, and so the circle continues and spirals away. Now at this point I'd love to hear from some of you dancers out there together with students and teachers. Maybe my reality is just a one-off and I've misread the situation. So get writing now and tell me or show me with videos that I'm just a gloomy Eeyore. Bye.